In 2013, 17.6 million people worldwide went on a cruise, yet how many of those people know how these massive floating tower blocks are prevented from rolling over in the slightest breeze? As a ship leans to one side, be it due to wind or waves, it produces a moment, a turning force that depends upon the centre of mass of the ship and the difference between the point of buoyancy when the ship is vertical and the new point when the ship is heeling over. If you were to draw a line between the point of buoyancy of when the ship is vertical and the centre of mass, and then another line vertically passing through the centre of buoyancy of the ship in its heeled position, the point at which they cross is called the metacentre, and it is the point at which the ship rotates around. To clarify these terms, the point of buoyancy is a point in which all the upward force from the displacement of water can be modelled as acting upon, and the centre of mass is the point in which, crudely speaking, the ship's mass resides. For all intents and purposes, the centre of gravity and mass are effectively the same. As the ship lists, the angle between those two lines increases, and the corrective of force applied adjusts accordingly, as the moment is based upon the distance between the metacentre and the centre of gravity, multiplied by the weight of the ship and the sine of the angle. Hence, the maximum corrective force will theoretically be observed when the ship is at 90 degrees to the vertical. However, it is important to point out that the model only works for small angles of rotation, and that approaching extreme angles results in shifts in the centre of mass and the metacentre. If this might concern you, just take into account the sheer weight of a cruise liner. For example, the Queen Mary 2 is 76,000 tonnes. Even with the metacentre one metre away, a force would need to be applied to the ship of approximately 65 million newtons to cause the ship to heal 5 degrees.